I think that one obstacle that is there and uh, it is still not very easy to overcome is accessibility to large scale data. This software is uh, making the lives of doctors or uh, radiologists in general easier. So when you go and talk to the medical world, what are the challenges in communicating if you like the value of what you're doing? The medical world actually consists of, uh, of many different uh, fields and areas. So when it is to go and interface doctors, indeed is the, uh, the, the situation we described before, the fear of the machine. So uh, doctors are very skeptical about the use of AI. They're very skeptical about the use of automation. They would challenge it to the furthest extent possible before they actually get to approve it or to accept it. So for us, it is very important to highlight the element that I mentioned before, which is that we are not trying to replace them, we're actually trying to empower them. And we want to make use of their expertise as opposed to go over there and replace that. So this is our strategy in uh, interfacing the radiologists and doctors themselves. When it comes into uh, trying to communicate our works into companies that uh, could embed them and, and make them part of their own product and, and, and offering, then it is a completely different challenge. And that challenge is, you know, we are actually using automation. It's exactly for the opposite of what the doctors uh, want. So uh, try to convince us why we shouldn't continue the same trend and we should use or look at your offer. So it is the very exact opposite and we are actually trying to find a middle, a middle solution there and uh, one thing to say for sure is that this is not an easy game. It seems that the acceptance by the medical community is the first roadblocks to go over but if this solution as other solutions have to become the standard practice, what are the other steps and if you want the other roadblocks to be adopted. The, uh, the regulatory processes are indeed very strict in this area and uh, this is for a very good reason so we all respect that but it is indeed one, one of these factors that makes things slow and we cannot actually deliver solutions very fast into the pipeline. But we, we see that in making sure, for example, that data we use for training algorithms have, have been anonymized. And also we see that in uh, whenever you have a, a, a solution, you know, it needs to go through FDA approval, which is a process that takes time and a lot of money. But indeed, as I mentioned before, there is a very good reason for each one of these. These are not obstacles. So everybody that works in the field takes this into consideration ahead of time and prepares for that. I think that one obstacle that is there and uh, it is still not very easy to overcome is accessibility to large scale data for training models, for actually uh, demonstrating value of existing solutions for pretty much, you know, uh, running exercises at scale. Who are the customers in the end of a solution like this? Pretty much everybody we just mentioned, plus the, plus the patient. But I will start uh, very briefly with uh, 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 every one of these. So the, uh, the, the companies that provide the build hardware, they also have the software, they provide the software in order to analyze the results of their imaging devices. So if we come up with the, uh, um, a very reliable solution, then most obviously this is something that they are most interested in. The hospitals themselves, of course, because, you know, this software is uh, making the lives of doctors or uh, radiologists in general easier. So whether it comes from us directly or from the company providing the hardware, it is the same thing. It is the same weight. You know, they do need reliable software and as such, they are part of the, of the market sector. The insurance can most certainly benefit from that because we do see fraud a lot of fraud in the healthcare system. So a lot of times insurances, insurance companies would like to, uh, to ask uh, the medical care providers, you know, was there really a reason to do that? Can you show us evidence that indeed, you know, what you did was justified? So for them to be able to ask that question in a fully automatic manner and way, then they do need to have that technology at hand and the data that has been collected for the specific patient that they are. One, one last one is the, uh, the actual uh, patient himself or herself and that is uh, assume that you know you do get your scans and you do get your diagnosis usually that comes in the form of a, of a paper or a report which is uh, so technical in nature that it's very hard to understand 
most people have a hard time understanding. So if you want to go back home and actually ask yourself, so what exactly is it that the doctor saw? Well, imagine that, you know, if you have the right software and it's portable enough, you might have an app in your mobile phone that would load the images and it would load the, uh, the key parameters that were uh, utilized in order to generate what the doctor saw and actually visualize it for yourself. And this is a very powerful kind of enabling uh, technology for the, for the patient himself or herself.